This is TWIT. And we're here with Dr. John Cresitas, Distinguished Professor of the University at Buffalo at the State University of New York. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And uh, we're here to talk about orbital debris. So I thought Space maybe... Junk. Thank you, Tarek. <laughs> you just restarted my heart. Uh, <laughs> And I thought we've talked about it in episodes past, but it's been a really long time. So, John, if you wouldn't mind uh, just sort of framing the problem for us, because it's it's a big and ever growing one that I don't think gets enough attention and uh, perhaps isn't taken seriously enough, at least not by the public. So if you just kind of frame the problem, then we could talk about some of the specifics. Sure. So first of all, I have to define what orbital debris is. It's anything that's not useful. So it can be as small as a paint flake, or it could be as large as a unused rocket body that's just going around in space. Uh, the problem is that there's uh, obviously many objects up there. Currently, we track about 40 some thousand objects, uh, softball size or bigger. The big issue is they're moving very, very fast. They're going at 17,500 miles per hour. And the reason why is that's it goes back to Newton. Newton imagined a cannon on top of a very high mountain. He shot a cannonball, hit the ground, and he thought about, okay, if I shoot it further, it's going to hit down further. If I shoot it faster, it can keep going. And he asked himself an interesting question, at what velocity do I have to shoot this cannonball so it never hits the ground? And that's 17,500 miles per hour. And that's where gravity came from. So anything slower than that, the Earth's gravity is going to pull it back in. That's why we need to achieve that velocity. So when you see astronauts floating in space, you shouldn't think of them as floating. You should really think of them as falling at 17,500 miles per hour, but never hitting the ground. And the problem is that there's different types of orbits. So I always like to use the car lane analogy. So if I have two cars, one behind the other, same orbit, let's say 17,500 miles per hour, not a problem. But there's different types of orbits. You can have something going around the equator, for example. In a worst case scenario, you can have a little piece of debris going around the pole. So that's a T-bone intersection. So imagine two cars colliding at a T-bone at 17,500 miles per hour. That's a very violent collision. And we're very worried about that because that can cause more debris, which collides with other debris and causes us some big problems. So I think for a lot of folks, their introduction to this whole conversation may have been watching the movie Gravity, which was a little on the dramatic side, but it did introduce most of us to the Kessler syndrome which is, I think, part of what you're alluding to there. But just to take a, a small step back, I think, um, and again, we've talked about this a bit, but when you're talking about orbital debris, and you, and you sort of, you address this, but you, you're talking about uh, rocks and ice that's left over from the formation of the solar system. You're talking about exploded rocket stages. You're talking about anti-satellite weapons tests, which leave huge clouds of debris. Uh, we're talking about bits of ice that may have come from fuel venting from a rocket. And as you said, paint flakes, which we've noted on the show a number of times, it was a paint flake no bigger the size, than the size of a dime that just about took out the front, the first panel of five of the front window, of one of the shuttle orbiters, and so on and so on and so on. So it, at these speeds, it doesn't take much to cause major damage. So if I read my ancient physics education correctly, even something the size of a BB, if it's moving fast enough, can puncture a, an aluminum ball, correct? Exactly. And that's that's a problem. And I'm most fearful of astronauts. So going back to gravity, yeah, that's uh, that's a scary situation. But it's all momentum, right? Momentum is mass times velocity. So if you have a large mass and small uh, velocity, you can have a lot of momentum. Uh, train, for example, you can have a very small mass, a lot of velocity. And that's the case we have in, in space that can cause a lot, a lot of damage. So the Kessler syndrome is something you know, we can get into, but um, it's something I'm very worried about. I think if we don't fix this problem and get on top of it, at least try to slow down the growth to have science and the technology catch up to be able to take out debris. I truly believe in 50 years from now, we're going to be in Kessler syndrome. Well, John, you know, I wanted to ask just about that timeliness part of it because just just overnight there was a rocket failure like trying uh, a spacex rocket uh, that that failed while trying to launch um like a whole bunch of satellites uh, starlink satellites uh in orbit they said that it had a uh, uh an rud a rapid unscheduled disassembly of an, an engine during during a relight which to me just screams more debris uh, up there right now uh in a really busy area and then I, we've been seeing a bunch of of reports of um 
of uh, other junk was falling back to earth. I think in Saskatchewan, there's a report out uh, uh, this week uh, from the scientists that are studying SpaceX debris there in North Carolina, uh, near one of uh, one of my writer's homes. Uh, he can go see a piece of a, a dragon trunk uh, that just fell out of the sky there. I mean, I mean, is, is it, is it, is the Kessler syndrome like not happening now? I mean, it just seems that we're in it uh, right now uh, where we see all of this stuff just falling out of space uh, or, or blowing up in space. In fact, there was just a recent uh, satellite uh, 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 breakup event or explosion too that sent the astronauts you just mentioned uh, uh, in shelter for a short amount of time. Right. Uh, so no, we're not in Kessler syndrome right now. Kessler syndrome is the is the situation where if you put up a satellite or anything, uh, say humans have to navigate the debris field. Uh, we're able to be able to do it without the probability of collision being so great that it's not worth it. Uh, so that would make low Earth orbit, essentially what we're focusing on right now, useless. And right now, low Earth orbit is not useless. I think the, the biggest problem is we haven't had that many events. I mean, you mentioned these, and I think the one interesting one is the um, battery that came down through the person's house in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. um, trying to get some money from NASA, and they should get some money from NASA, honestly. Because um, NASA, I used to work for NASA, I love NASA, but sometimes they make mistakes. But yeah, the, the stuff coming down, that's starting to become more prevalent. So that's becoming an issue as well, too. Um, some countries, well, China especially, is not doing a very controlled manner to have them come down. The rocket mm -hmm. bodies, uh, we do a much better job at that. Sometimes we mess up, as I just mentioned. But uh, it's not the stuff that's coming down that we're really worried about. There have been some documented cases where I actually hit a human, but nobody's actually been killed yet. Um, I'm more worried about what's going to go on in space itself. Uh, so everything lower third, there's still air molecules up there. There's still drag. These satellites will eventually come down because of drag and all the debris. Uh, you mentioned missiles. When China blew up neural satellites, it caused about 2,000 pieces of space debris. And that debris is all over the place in terms of altitude and inclination. And also six months later, the Terra satellite had a 7% chance of colliding with that piece of space debris. So that moved. Uh, anything greater than one in 10,000, we will send up a message to somebody and say, hey, you should you should probably move. Uh, so there have there have been instances, uh, Radium Cosmos really sent a message up when those two satellites collided. They did not meet that 10, one in 10,000 threshold, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so I like to say they won the bad lottery. That's not a message that we're not tracking these satellites as best as we can. It's really modeling where they're going to go because we don't see them all the time. Uh, but there haven't been enough instances yet to really give us that scare that we need. And unfortunately, like a lot of things that we do, we're going to pawn this off to our kids. So when I give presentations to uh, junior high kids and college kids, I, I tell them, unfortunately, I think you're going to have to solve this problem because we're doing the classic thing of... Um, on and off to our kids and unfortunate that's what's going on and um we'll see where all that goes yeah and just just a, a quick follow-up because you mentioned a couple of things there that i think we want to highlight that that uh uh chinese anti-satellite test that was a 2007 test where they destroyed a satellite created vast cloud of debris that that is a a problem that we're dealing with now and uh and of course that iridium cosmos i remember that uh, vividly, that was a, that 2009 satellite collision that of two satellites in different orbits that like crashed, and then you've got these two streams of debris in different orbits now, uh, which just seems horrible. And it's just it's up there until it's until it, I guess the drag pulls it all down. Is that right? Right. So that caused about 500 pieces of space debris. Uh, with with those, so we have telescopes and radars that track these satellites. Unfortunately, we, we don't see them all the time. And even if we did, there's that causes other problems. I always like to say to freshmen, when an engineer tells you a piece of good news, first question you should ask is, what's the bad news? Because I've never had good news without bad news. So <laughs> if you track stuff all the time, you would say, well, that sounds like a really good news. What's what's the bad news of doing that? Um, the bad news is that I have to track a lot more objects. And that, that causes problems in what's called data association, because I don't know what the objects are a lot of times. So I have to give them a number and then they pop up again. How do I know it's the same satellite? When I have, I'm tracking a lot of satellites, I could have stuff going like this and I could lose the, misassociate those objects and that's bad. So same, I think that's a space station when it really isn't, that's that's bad too. But we're not there anywhere near that point of uh, persistent surveillance. We have to use exactly Newton's equations. Same ones that he did with a little bit of a ballistic-like coefficient on there uh, to handle disturbances to predict where these satellites are going to go. 
And right now, to this day, it's still done like the 1960s. They assume that the shape is a cannonball. We know it's not a cannonball. And um, we use that to predict where the satellite's going to be. And unfortunately, with the Iridium Cosmos, that prediction was off. And that what led to that uh, collision. And like I said, they won the bad lottery. As far as the Chinese ASAT, um, yeah, there's been some studies uh, done by AGI that um, predicts that 80% of that stuff's going to be up there, even using a uh, high drag model 100 years from now. So that's pretty scary when you think about that. And that's the problem. We're, we're putting a lot more stuff up there than what's coming down. And so that debris field is growing in space. And again, if we get to that point where we have the probability of collision being so great, it's not, you have to take out insurance, for example. Uh -huh. Everybody takes out insurance. Nobody's going to insure you to take out, to build satellites. So uh, that'll essentially render low Earth orbit, and that's going to cause a lot of problems. You know, we've we've often decried uh, China for for dumping rocket stages just down the block from their launch site, sometimes near villages and so forth. But I suppose, as you say, there's good news, bad news. The good news there is it's not becoming orbital debris. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>